Hello students, welcome to lecture 13 of week of March 21st. And in this uh, video, we're going to practice with finding intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. So um, first assignment asks us to find the intervals on which function f of x, which is x squared minus 6x, oh, mistake here, should be just 5x, didn't... Uh, didn't write it correctly, so just 5, yeah. Um, so x squared minus 6x plus 5 is increasing, and in, in which intervals it's decreasing. So basically, you do it the following way. Um, first of all, we need to find where derivative of the function is greater than 0, and when derivative is uh, less than 0. And basically how you do it, you find derivative and you set it equal to zero. All right. So let's find derivative first. So derivative of our function is derivative of x squared minus 6x plus 5. We find derivative, which is 2x minus 6. All right. And we set it equal to zero. So... 2x minus 6 equals 0, which means 2x equal to 6 if we add 6 to both sides. And if we divide by 2, we get x equal to 3. So what does it mean for us? If we create a graph of the following kind, here we're going to put the derivative function. And on the graph, we're going to put where derivative is equal to 0. So the only place where derivative equal to 0 is x equal to 3. And often, this graph is called signed graph. So that means the only place where derivative is equal to 0 is x equal 3. So on the left side of 3, derivative is either positive or negative. And on the right side of 3, derivative is either positive or negative. Again, why does it happen? Because the only place where it's 0 is 3. So it has to be different from 0 on the left, and it has to be different from 0 on the right. So how do you figure out what it is? You take a testing point. So testing points. So what does it mean? In each interval, you find one point that you would like to use. So for example, uh, on the left side of 3, we can use x equal to 0. That will be our testing point on the left. So what you do with this testing point, you plug it in into the derivative function. So you calculate f prime at 0. So our f prime was 2 times 0 minus 6, so it's negative 6, so it's less than 0. So what you do, you put a big minus on this side. And then you do the same with the right side. So we're going to take a point on the right, like x equals 4, and we're going to plug it in into the derivative. So we're going to get f prime at 4 equals 2 times 4 minus 6. So we're going to get 8 minus 6, which is equal to 2, which is positive. So on the right side of 3, we put a big plus. So that means on this side, derivative is negative, and on this side, derivative is uh, positive. So now we can just write our answer. We can say that f of x is increasing. And let me remind you, increasing means derivative is positive from the previous lecture. On minus infinity, we always go from left to right. Left to right. So uh, from minus infinity until 3, and f of x is, I said increasing, so I didn't say it right, didn't say it right, the positive is uh, from 3 to positive infinity, I made a small mistake, so let's fix it, 3 to positive infinity, and f of x is decreasing on minus infinity to positive 3. 
and for the increasing, decreasing sides, we we'll always use parentheses. Not break it. Right, so parentheses, parentheses. So we accomplish this example. We're moving to the next example over here. Here it tells us uh, find the intervals on which f of x minus x cubed is increasing and the intervals on which it is decreasing. So the procedure would be the same. First, we're going to calculate derivative of f, which is derivative of negative x cubed, and minus 1 is a constant, so we keep it up front, and then we take a derivative of x cubed. So 3 goes down, then we have negative 3x squared. All right, and so we take it and we set it equal to 0. So negative 3x squared is equal to 0 which we divide both sides by negative 3, so x squared is equal to 0, and then we take a square root on both sides, so we get plus or minus 0, but plus or minus 0 is just 0. So we create a sine graph. This is a graph for the derivative, and we put our 0, and we take a testing point on the left, like negative 1. So we take negative 1, and we calculate derivative at negative 1. So our derivative is negative 3, negative 1 squared. So it's negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3, so it's less than 0. So we put a big minus over here. And then we take a testing point on the right side, which is 1. And f prime at 1 is equal to negative 3 times 1 squared which is negative 3 times 1, which is also negative 3. So it's also negative. So that means our function is uh, always decreasing, never increasing, but what's going on at 0? And 0, it has to be flat. Why it has to be flat? Because the slope is equal to 0. So let's try to understand what's going on. The f of x is decreasing on minus infinity to infinity. But this answer is not really right. Why is that? Because at zero itself, it's not decreasing, it's flat. So the correct answer would be from minus infinity to zero, union zero to infinity, since at zero we have a horizontal tangent line. So the function is flat, it's not decreasing. And uh, one thing that we can do, we can take a maximum and check our, uh, our idea. So over here, we can go and plot negative, uh, negative 3x squared. So we're going to plot negative 3 times x squared, right? Uh, Oh, sorry, didn't do the right job. Should be cubed. Should be cubed. All right. All right, and so this is our function, which we can uh, take and plug in into our file over here for the... All right, so this is our function. As you can see, it, if we move from left to right, it keeps going down except over here because over here we have a horizontal tangent line. All right, so the next example tells us the following. If you have this complicated function, which is 3x to the 4 plus 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 2. And uh, it asks us to figure out on which intervals it's increasing or decreasing. And then we have to verify it by using derivatives. 
So let's try to do that. We can clearly see that up to this point, our function is decreasing. So it's decreasing on minus infinity to negative two. But also from this place to this place, it's also decreasing. So we put the union one, uh, zero to one. And it's increasing, so it has to move up if we move from left to right. And it's moving up from negative two from this place, moving up, up to zero. And union from one to positive infinity this way over here. All right, so if we move to the right, then it keeps moving up. So we just looked at the picture and we made these conjectures. But now we have to verify it by using derivative. So we take our f and we find derivative. So we have to find derivative of 3x to the 4 plus 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 2. All right, so we're going to take derivative of this function. So we get 3 times 4, and then we get x cubed plus uh, 4 times 3x squared minus 12 times 2x uh, plus 0. And if we simplify it, we're going to get 12x squared plus 12 uh, sorry, x cubed plus 12x squared minus 24x. And we set it equal to 0 as before. So we can clearly see that 12 is a common factor because 24 we can write as 12 times 2. But not only that, we have x, we have x, and we have x. So we can factor 12x. So we're left with x squared plus x minus 2. All right, and uh, so what would be the factors of this expression? We need to find two numbers, product of which is negative 2, and the sum is 1. So the, the only integers that gives us 2 is 1 and 2, and here we have x, and here we have x. So we'll put plus here and minus over here, since uh, plus 2 and negative 1 will give us positive 1 over here. So finally, we set it equal to 0. And uh, the solutions would be x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals negative 2. All right, so we create a signed graph. signed graph for the derivative, right? So our points are negative 2, 0, and 1. So let's take testing point. So we take a testing point on the left side of negative 2, which is negative 3. So we have 12 times negative 3 times negative 3 minus 1 minus 3 plus 2. And we don't really need to calculate. We just have to see what would be the plus or the minus of this expression. This is negative, this is negative, and uh, this is negative. So if we multiply negative by negative, we get a positive. And if we multiply by the last negative, we're going to get a negative number. So we can clearly see that this is less than 0, right? So we put a big minus over here. Then we have to take a testing point between minus 2 and 0, so we're going to take negative 1. So if we plug it in, we're going to get 12 times uh, negative 1 times negative 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 2. So again, let's try to do it. This is negative and negative, and this is positive. And negative times negative is a plus. And plus times plus is a plus, so it's greater than zero. So we put a big plus. Then we take a number between zero and one. A good choice would be one half. So it's 12 times one half 
times uh, one half minus one and one half plus one. So this is positive, this is negative, this is positive. And so if we multiply these numbers, we're gonna get a negative answer. So we put a minus. And then we take a testing point on the right side of one, let's say two. So we have 12 times two, two minus one and two plus one. I said plus one, but it's a mistake, should be plus two. Plus two and plus two. So we get plus, plus, and plus. So the answer is positive. So we put a big plus. So conclusion, f of x is decreasing. So we're looking for minuses, minus and minus. So from minus infinity to minus two, union zero to one. And f of x is increasing, and again, for increasing part, we're looking for pluses. Plus and plus is over here, so from minus two to zero, union one to infinity. And uh, does it match our previous result? One to infinity, one to infinity, minus two zero, this matches up. Here, minus infinity to minus two and zero to one also matches up so check mark and uh, this concludes this lecture so i'll see you in the next one